welcome to this edition of Steelers Weekly. Tonight you'll see some of the best content from Steelers.com that aired throughout the week. Let's get started. All right, I actually would like to start and go back to your rookie training camp and just take me through what it was like to maybe go through a John Mitchell boot camp and just learning the ropes of being an NFL player. Well, the John Mitchell boot camp wasn't easy, <laughs> but um, you know that was a legendary coach. So uh, he coached some legendary guys. He was a Super Bowl winner. He'd been around a lot of winning football teams. So everything he said was, you know, right on. I just had my eyes and well, eyes wide open, ears wide open. Just kept my head down and try to put my head in my playbook and learn as much as it plays and you know, try to be as much help as I can as a rookie. How much have you grown since then as a player? I would probably say a lot. Um, I've always been the youngest in what I do, even though I've been the biggest. <laughs> but uh, I definitely, you know, been drafted at 20. I was drafted at 20 years old, and uh, you know, I kind of grew up in the NFL, so you know, I got a, definitely got a chance to see a lot of things from different perspectives. Now, um, you can't say a record, but what do you measure in terms of a defense being successful? Well. Winning the Super Bowl, that's definitely one of them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and being able to, uh, you know, after that, being able to look at the lines. But I just think a dominant defensive performance. Um, um, just being able to just control the whole offense offensively when they pass, uh, when they run, anything they try to do is just kind of shutting them down to a certain extent that they feel like they can't do anything. And literally getting off the field every third down. Empty set for Russell Wilson. He's back with a sack. Big rush. He's hit again. It's down at the 41, and again, it's Stephon to it. You are tied for the team lead in sacks and tackles for loss. What does that say about you so far through five games? I'm kind of pissed at myself. I left two out there, so. <laughs> you want that number to be higher. Yeah. <laughs> They're not in chase mode no more. They tied up with me, but, uh, you know, I, we, I'm surrounded by great football players. Um, like I said, my whole life I've been kind of surrounded by great football players, so this is not new to me, but. You know, T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward, Bud Dupree, you know, Javon Hargrave in the lineup, and Tyson Allen, Dan, those guys coming along too just as fine. You know, Bush in the back. You know, my my role when I go into a game is just to create as much chaos and, you know, dis disruption as possible. And uh, I've always been doing that since I've been here. So um, it's nice to get a little acknowledgement from it, but I really don't care. I don't want to get some wins. I'll probably be better. <laughs> Uh, I know the past few years, getting to the quarterback wasn't a problem, creating that pressure in terms of sacks and whatnot. The interceptions, though, you guys are third in the entire league in interceptions so far. Does that mean you guys are maybe taking that next step of the splash plays and what you have been working at? Yeah, I remember saying that to you, I think, earlier this year in training camp. Yeah, that's basically what we really needed to do to try to, you know, take that next step that I know that we could get to. And I think we got a lot of guys that's doing that. Um, you know, especially when I found some guys to be able to do that and some guys that also been here that um, been, been on the team and been in the system for a while. And I think the pressure and it is creating that, um, you know, that time in between quarterback and receiver and the DBs are in the right places at the right time. I know following from what they coaches are teaching them and what they're practicing. You see, have it, you see it coming along. You mentioned Javon Hargrave. How underrated is he? Um, super underrated. You know, that guy is very good and uh, he got built in leverage, you could tell, you know, <laughs> you could tell by his steps and, uh, you know, he just, uh, he's everything you want from that, you know, nose tackle one, um, one technique uh, spot and he's doing a great job and he's just trucking along, he'll be just fine. I know it was just last year you faced the Chargers, not the outcome that you yeah. definitely wanted, but what has changed about them or what has not changed in terms of their offense? Well, Phil Rivers is still a quarterback, so that did a change. Um, I think, uh, you know, offensively, these guys got, you know, big time playmaking ability. They got, you know, a really good receiver. They got, um, you know, two good running backs. Um, you know, these guys got some playmakers on their side of the ball that we got to make sure we stop. And I think they also got Watt brother too, a fullback. So yeah. it'll be nice to go against him and give him a couple blows. <laughs> Did TJ tell you to say that? No, I think we all just saying it. <laughs> You're saying it in your head. <laughs> In terms of the Steelers, you mentioned the offense for the Chargers, Phillip Rivers. The other teams can't say, all right, Ben Roethlisberger this year, three different quarterbacks. What does that do to the defense in terms of maybe how you guys prepare? Or does it not change how you prepare? Well, of course that changed how you prepare. You know, that was a Hall of Fame quarterback we had. So, you know, you got guys that's coming in, stepping up, who was following and shadowing him. Um, you know, Mason is doing a good job, um, you know, especially getting his feet wet, getting thrown in the fire. I thought he was doing a pretty good job. You know, he got that big hit this past game. 
but I think he's going to bounce back from that. I think uh, uh, Doug, I think who came in after him, did a great job and you know just trying to get the ball out and you know taking those chances that we needed at the game. So I'm very confident in the quarterbacks we have. I think we even got a former first round draft pick quarterback who uh, could have an opportunity too. It all depends how they do it over there, how they handle it. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I have my bobblehead and I have my bell, which means it's time for Agree to Disagree, the show with the motto. I'm right, he's wrong, and we both hate the bell. <laughs> Here was this week's edition of Agree to Disagree. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I have my bobblehead and I have my bell, which means it's time for Agree to Disagree, the show with the motto. I'm right, he's wrong, and we both hate the bell. <laughs> All right. I agree. <laughs> Statement number one. Even if Mason is cleared, start Hodges. Pursue that, you're first. Yeah, I think that's uh, the way things are leaning. I think that's where the arrow is pointing. I think Mike Tomlin actually tipped that when he met the media this week, he talked about, and I quote, uh, being the coach of a 1-4 football team and having to go on the road against a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback with my third quarterback. As far as I can tell, Devlin Duck Hodges is the third quarterback. So I think he's going to start. Uh, the question is, how will the Steelers play it? My advice would be to let the Duck take flight. I don't think they need to uh, limit his exposure. I don't think they need to shorten the game. Let them play ball. Let them attack a secondary that's been ravaged by injury. The Chargers reportedly are trying out safeties this week. I'm not saying get in the shotgun and throw it 60 times. I'm saying use the playbook. Let Devlin Duck Hodges do what's required at the time and be as fearless turning to him as he will be fearless on that field. Let's play it that way and see what happens. Labs. Okay, I agree with Mike on, in the sense that uh, regardless of whether Mason Rudolph is cleared uh, from the, in the concussion protocol this week, I would still be in favor of starting uh, Devlin Hodges. Uh, too often, uh, recently, we've seen here with the Steelers, quarterbacks concussed uh, on a game weekend, get cleared during the week, and then start the following weekend. And the performances have not been pretty. And these were veteran guys, Ben Roethlisberger, Tommy Maddox, guys who had been around, had a lot of experience. That's a good point. Uh, and it's the, not just a Steeler thing. Right. And then the other thing is um, Mason Rudolph is too young to be one of those, do some mental reps, you know, a couple of days, throw it around a little on Friday, and then go out to the West Coast and, and play on Sunday night. So if he is unable to be a full participant in practice uh, multiple days this week, I'm not taking a chance. I'm going to start Devlin Hodges. All right. Statement number two, nine and seven will rule the North. Labs, your first. Um, I'm going to disagree. You're laughing. Well, I know. I'm going to disagree because I don't know if you're going to need nine and seven. Um, you know, <laughs> nine and seven might be the, the upper level of what you need. On 2014, Carolina won the NFC South seven, eight, and one. You know, when you look at uh, some of the games that these other, the Cleveland and the Ravens have, the Browns have Seattle at New England, at Denver. I understand they have some problems, but uh, they're a pretty good pass rush. They still have Buffalo. Uh, they have the Ravens. Uh, the Ravens have uh, the, at Seattle, which is no day at the beach. Then they're by, then at, uh, against the New England Patriots and Tom Brady. They have a game at the Rams on Monday Night Football. Then they play the 49ers the next week. Uh, the NFC West is a pretty good division. Uh, so I don't think either one of those two teams is going to run away with it. I don't know that if it's going to take nine wins, but I think if a team has nine wins, that's a lock. Prasuda? Yeah, I, I think it'll take nine just to be – uh, the guy who does not agree with Labriola, but I'm going to I'm going to agree with the present uh, with the premise. 
uh, and the scheduling points are, are well taken. I, I'm looking at it from the standpoint of I think we've seen a pretty representative uh, group of uh, performances by all the teams involved. Cleveland does not have an offensive line as far as I can tell. And uh, the way the 49ers just ran the ball on the Browns and kept running it uh, the other night, I didn't see Cleveland's defense ever dig in and say enough is enough. Uh, Baltimore uh, has defensive problems from what I can tell. And I think the Bengals, even though they're winless, they're going to win at least one division game, maybe two. So one and four, an agonizing start for the Steelers. And to maybe start fresh this week, Tunch, you are going first. All right, Missy, I, I want to stop number 30, Austin Eckler. I know Melvin Gordon's back, but I have not seen him flash. getting ready for Sunday night football Steelers visiting the Chargers. It is time now for our keys to the game presented by your neighborhood Ford store. I'm Missy Matthews with Tunch Ilkin and Arthur Motes. And to maybe start fresh this week, Tunch, you are going first. All right, Missy, I, I want to stop number 30, Austin Eckler. I know Melvin Gordon's back, but I have not seen him flash. Austin Eckler runs low to the ground. He's leading them in carries and he's leading them in receptions. He's got 98 touches on the year and over uh, uh, 580 yards, and he can beat you. He runs low to the ground, he's very shifty, Absolutely. and he catches the ball great coming out of the backfield. Yeah, without a doubt he does, but the thing that I feel is even more so important about stopping him is, Phillip Rivers hasn't looked very impressive this right. season, and especially last week, he struggled, especially in the red zone. Yeah. So if you can make him have to be the guy, I think it bodes really well for the Steelers defense. You know, Arthur, the other thing is he, uh, he throws so many screens to Austin Eckler. That's, that, that's they, I mean, they, they, he, they, they fake the outside zone, mm -hmm. semi-roll, he throws the screen. I think I, I counted eight screens Absolutely. in the cut up. So man, just stop number 30 and you'll stop the Chargers. Mm -hmm. All right, Arthur, what's your key for this week? All right, so for me, it's important that the Steelers get the running game going. If you look at this Chargers defense, they're built to rush the passer. Right. They have great outside linebackers, DNs, whatever you want to call them, right. and their secondary is really good, but their linebackers have been struggling this year. So I think if you can get that running game going, and it doesn't matter who it is, it could be James Conner, Benny Snell, whatever combination you want to use in that backfield, get that running game going, and it's going to bode well for the Steelers offense. And I think We'll all enjoy that. And yeah. I know you like to see the O line and get yeah, a little, I, I have a little see, fun, right? You, you know, um, Arthur, it seems like the Chargers defensive line plays the run on the way to the quarterback. They don't care about stopping the run. They want to, they all want to, Bosa and, and the, the, uh, the, they want to get to the quarterback. Absolutely. And I think uh, the guys, David DeCastro, Pounce, uh, Ramon, the Big Al, Al, yeah, the Big Ragu. I think, and, and man, Father, I think they're a little angry. Okay. I saw it outside. They're a little mm -hmm. salty. So carry that to the San Diego Charger defense and just run on them, throw them on the ground, gore them. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. All right, guys, I'm sticking with the Steelers offense. How many times have we seen the Steelers defense make these splash plays this year, the mm -hmm. interceptions, taking the ball away from the opposing team? The Steelers offense has to do more than score a field goal. They need to get into the end zone. If they would have done that in the first half of the game against the Baltimore Ravens, there wouldn't have been an overtime. Very true. So I think for the Steelers offense, I know there's a lot of new moving parts going around at multiple positions, but they have to get into the end zone. They have to score points. Absolutely. You know, the, one of the, the challenges, though, Missy, is you get a third team quarterback. Uh, you know, whenever you get uh, uh, whenever you get a takeaway in the plus in plus territory, normally the first play out of the box is going to the end Take zone. Take the shot. Take the shot. <laughs> you know, uh, BA was like that, Bruce Arians, I think Randy is like that, but he's limited. Uh, but most uh, 
most aggressive us offensive coordinators want to take the shot to the end zone. You, you've been on the other side of the ball and seen it. Absolutely. We always say that's football one-on-one. -on -one. Right, right. Anytime it's a turnover or anytime the offense crosses midfield, yeah. alert the shot. Yeah. All right. Those are our keys to the game. Thanks so much for joining us. Second down and long, Jackson, oh, it's intercepted! Jackson laid it right out there for Mike Hilton. Now, Tunch, the Steelers defense had three interceptions yesterday. Take us through one of them. This is the one by Mike Hilton. Yeah, well, you know, one of the, the great things about this play uh, right here is we're going to stop this. Um, they're in cover three zone. So he's got the outside zone, he's got the middle zone, and uh, Steve Nelson's got uh, the deep third right here. Now underneath, you've got four across. So what, when, the, when you say cover three, it's four under. Now the interesting thing is uh, that Willie Sneed is going to run an out cut, and then uh, also uh, uh, this guy is going to run a, a, an out cut as well. And watch the way Willie drops right in between them and then gets a little depth so he can make the play. This is, uh, by the way, this is Seth Roberts. He runs it. Willie Sneed runs the underneath. Uh, let's go to the film. And right there. Now watch. Did you see the way uh, Mike Hilton got a little deeper? Some good news, Vance McDonald is not on the Steelers injury report, but let's get right to it. It is Friday to see who is in and who is out for the Sunday night matchup against the LA Chargers. As you can see, the big one, Mason Rudolph, has been ruled out. He's like that guy who can just sort of see things before other people. He just quicker vision of the field. Um, you know, whether it's the way defenses unfold or the way core receivers are going to be. Um, I think he's great at throwing them into anticipation. So I think he'll play well. All right, that is tight end Vance McDonald talking about Devlin Duck Hodges. Some good news, Vance McDonald is not on the Steelers injury report, but let's get right to it. It is Friday to see who is in and who is out for the Sunday night matchup against the L.A. Chargers. As you can see, the big one, Mason Rudolph, has been ruled out for this game. Also, Rosie Nix, Mark Barron, Jalen Samuels, and James Washington. The other names there besides Rudolph probably don't surprise you. And then listed as questionable, is Steve Nelson. Steve Nelson was limited all week, but the good sign, he is not doubtful. He is listed as questionable. Now, in terms of Mason Rudolph, he is still in the concussion protocol. He was limited on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. The Steelers making that decision to rule him out due to still being in the protocol. So that means there's some roster moves being made that Mason Rudolph will not be active on Sunday. There are two, though, however, due to the injury to Jalen Samuels. The Steelers have activated Paxton Lynch and Trey Edmonds from their practice squad. In, room to, in order to make room for them on the Steelers' 53-man roster, they have waived Fred Johnson and J. Rona Elliott. So those are all of the status reports and the transactions as the Steelers get their roster ready for Sunday night football in L.A. Of course, that means that Devlin Hodges will be the Steelers starter. Paxton Lynch backing him up. A lot of questions all week for all of the offensive teammates in terms of what they have seen from Hodges so far. He's been with the Steelers since rookie minicamp, played with them through training camp. Even though he didn't make the 53, the Steelers still brought him back. We saw what he did in the second half, leading the Steelers to a touchdown in that game against the Ravens. Here's more from wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster. Yeah, I mean, for us, you know, we, we, we call plays that's going to help us, you know, collectively to win this game. Obviously, we call plays for him that he feels comfortable at, what he feels like he can execute, and obviously he's able to do all that. Um, you can see this preview in the game where he came in and, you know, we came down, we went down, we put points on the board, and I'm not nervous at all. You know, we're going to L.A., and it's going to be a fun game because it's my hometown, and I'm, and I'm happy to rock with the guys that's playing this week. 
Now three different quarterbacks have played for the Pittsburgh Steelers so far in 2019. The Steelers defense knows they have to step up, and they have been stepping up over the past few games this week. I had a chance to sit down with Stefan Tuitt to talk about maybe that added pressure and what they can do to help the offense. Well, of course that changed how you prepare. You know, that was a Hall of Fame quarterback we had. So, you know, you got guys that's coming in, stepping up, who was following the shadow of him. Um, you know, Mason is doing a good job, um, you know, especially getting his feet wet, getting thrown in the fire. I thought he was doing a pretty good job. You know, he got that big hit this past game. But I think he's going to bounce back from that. I think uh, uh, Doug, I think, who came in after him, did a great job, you know, just trying to get the ball out and, you know, taking those chances that we needed at the game. So I'm very confident in the quarterbacks we have. I think we even got a former first-round draft pick quarterback who uh, could have an opportunity too. It all depends how they do it over there, how they handle it. But I think, uh, you know, I think our offensive coordinator got some. Um, you know, he's a good coach and he get those guys prepared. All right, so once again, to reiterate the big news in terms of the Steelers' status report, Mason Rudolph still in the concussion protocol. He has been ruled out for Sunday. The Steelers bumped up Paxton Lynch from their practice squad to the 53-man roster. So there are two active quarterbacks will be Devlin Hodges and Paxton Lynch. Also, Trey Edmonds is up for an injured Jalen Samuels. That's the very latest here inside the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Steelers Live. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on this edition of Steelers Weekly. We'll see you next time.